Good day and welcome to Westchester Talk Radio, westchestertalkradio.com, produced by Shark and Creative. That is Shark with a C, not a K. You see the logo on the wall behind me in orange where it says Shark. There you go. You can see a little better. Shark Creative produces us and we are made possible by our good friends over at places like Entergy, Indian Point Energy Center, supporting our communities right through April of 2021. Lipolis Electric, don't be left in the dark, get Lipolis. Also, Hightower Westchester at Hightower Westchester, they manage your wealth to a fiduciary standard. Welcome to the Cup of Joe political show. I'm John Marino, and we are joined by Nancy Seligason. Nancy is the supervisor of the town of Mamaroneck, which also includes Larchmont, the village of Larchmont, the village of Mamaroneck. And Nancy, thank you for joining us here on Westchester Talk Radio. I know this year of 2020 has been like a year, no other before, nine years in office for you. How are things going in Mamaroneck now with the reopening after we hope we have totally flattened this pandemic curve? Uh, Well, hi, John. Uh, Things are going well in the town of Mamaroneck, I'm happy to say. We have um, continued our government services throughout the pandemic, but it really was difficult and stressful to figure out how to provide the continuing high level of services that we do provide. You had to reinvent government, correct? Yes, that is that is what I said earlier, yes. Yeah. Um, I think everyone's had to reinvent their own job and their own career and their own work uh, with all the limitations and changes from COVID. So in the beginning here in the town, we Uh, closed the town center two days a week. We only had people coming in every other day to minimize exposure to everyone. Uh, We actually had half the staff coming in on those every other days. Uh, We staggered times of starting for different employees. We uh, changed our garbage service so that instead of the backdoor service of pickup wherever you had your garbage can, you had to bring it to the curb so that our sanitation employees were not um, walking around everyone's yards and were able to get the uh, garbage faster. Uh, We had to close the ice rink. Um, You know, it just goes on and on. We had to close our senior center, which is so sad. And it's just been a year of disappointments in so many ways. Um, But we have pivoted, been able to provide the services that we always provide. In fact, this summer, although we had to uh, cancel the summer camp programs as we know them, our recreation department was really creative and active and they provided uh, programs for kids and for seniors uh, that were very different in scale and scope. The ones that were in person were very few people gathered at once, socially distanced, but there were a lot of offerings online as well for uh, programs for kids. Now, how has the reaction been around the town when it comes to cooperation? Some people obviously feel that government is trying to control us here through all of this. And yet we look at the numbers, we look at the statistics, and I think if government really wanted to control us, they do it in a different way. Has the reaction around town overall been, let's cooperate, let's get through this, all of us together? I would say overall, yes. I mean, I was doing daily robocalls and email blasts out to um, our residents, giving them the statistics, the information. You know, we had daily calls with the county uh, staff and county executive, which was so helpful to us. Those calls continue today, but on a weekly basis. Um, Yes, I think that everyone felt we need to come together as a community. That's what I was asking everyone to do asking them to cooperate in terms of the um, protocols that we were being asked to uh, to do, including, of course, wearing masks, socially distancing, not gathering in large groups, making sure that if you didn't feel well, you didn't go uh, into work or you didn't get together with other people, and trying to help people know that they're not alone. We are in this together. It's as a community. And it was really scary and frightening, it still is for many people, but we're in a much better place now than we were in March uh, and April where we had such large, large numbers of people getting sick. So I, I think that the community has calmed down from that peak of of worry and concern, but there still is the need to be vigilant and 
take care of ourselves, our neighbors, our families, our loved ones by continuing to wear a mask in public, socially distancing all the time, not gathering in large crowds. You know, we have to keep up the good work so that we keep these numbers down and don't become an area with a spike in cases and, and, and sick people. Now, you talk about people calming down over time. I was in Larchmont just a few days ago along Chatsworth Avenue, along Larchmont Avenue, and it was great to see all of the outdoor dining. Not only the fact that people were doing it, but the way, the care that each individual restaurant and eatery took to set themselves up. This was not, let's move all the tables outside. This is an elaborate undertaking that involves a business, it involves a restaurant, it involves government approval, and much more to be able to do this. And it seems like everybody's got the routine down in town. You're right. It has been a joy to see the restaurants reopen, but reopen in this manner, especially. I mean, I think it's actually a great enhancement to the community and to the vibrancy of the community. It feels so great to walk around the streets or to have dinner outside, al fresco, in these lovely settings where you have limited traffic and you have um, a real festive kind of feeling. And I think we're seeing that in all our communities. I even had dinner the other night in Rye outside and it was the same kind of feeling. I think that that is really um, buoyed up people in our community. I haven't heard anyone say anything but great uh, things about the change of the al fresco dining and hoping that we can continue it for as long as possible uh, through the winter, you know, as long as the weather cooperates a little bit. Um, so that has really been a great uh, positive from the situation. <laughs> Yeah, if there's anything positive to come out of any of this, I think that is one thing. I think this gives restaurants and eateries options once we hopefully get back to normal towards the end of this year or early next year, once we have a vaccine, a vaccine we can trust. And a restaurant can now say, we know how to do this inside, but I think we know how to do this outside too. And you get a combined dining sense and combined dining option at a lot of eateries, indoors and outdoors, that you would not have had before. Right. And I, I really congratulate Larchmont Village and Maranek Village and all the other communities that have really uh, pivoted and worked with their restaurants and their um, stores to help them be able to do things outside. Even in the town of Maranek, where we only have a few restaurants because most of the commercial uh, businesses are in the villages, we also have seen our restaurants do the same. And I'm very pleased that they're able to continue to be open and, and serve people. Now, we have a very controversial issue all around the state of New York and this tri-state area, different than in other parts of the country where schools have reopened straight up, as we call it, in many areas where kids just go in and you wait to see if there's a COVID spike. If there is, they shut the school down. If there isn't, they just continue to operate. Around here, we have a combination of at-home learning and in-school learning. How, with the reopening of schools underway now, is this going within the town of Mamaroneck? Well, you know, the Mamaroneck School District services the village of Larchmont, the village of Mamaroneck, and the town of Mamaroneck pretty much. I mean, there are some uh, Garsdale School District overlap, and, and if you know, of course, there's private schools involved as well. And you have the Rye Neck High School also, too. Yes, and that's in Rye, the village. Not, in Mamaroneck. Right, that's in the, the actual town of Rye and part of the village of Mamaroneck. Right. Um, it's nothing if not confusing. But uh, I'm knocking on wood because so far so good in the sense that we see a lot of kids walking the, uh, to school, riding their bikes to school. They have the two uh, times that they're being asked to participate. There's a morning session and an afternoon session. Um, so far, it seems like it's working all right. You know, the school is a completely different municipality and district from the town government. We do meet on a quarterly basis. We talk more often than that, of course, because we all work together for the community. But we have not heard, um, you know, anything terrible so far. So it looks like it's going pretty well so far. I was reading an article right before you and I started this off and got together, and I'm not going to say which newspaper in the tri-state area, but calling for reopen all the schools all over the front page. And I look at that and I say, yes, kids need to be learning together with each other, 
no, the circumstances are not right for doing this right now. So if the kids educationally, and who knows if this is true or not, take a little bit of a step back there just to be safe at home. Isn't that worth it to make sure kids are safe, teachers are safe, the system is safe, and then one day, hopefully soon, we can get back to what we call regular learning? Um, I think so, too. I think, though, that every family has to make the decision for themselves. And I have heard so many different feelings and opinions from folks in our community. Some families feel very strongly that they want their kids back in school and that that is the most important thing. And others who feel very strongly that they are not yet comfortable having their kids in school and in a larger community and and being together. So it's really interesting to me. It's not predictable as to who's going to feel which way. It really is um, people's level of uh, anxiety and worry about the coronavirus or their level of um, feeling that there is some measure of safety in, in all of the protocols. Uh, but I would agree that I feel like we need to take it slowly um, to see how it works. And I think that's what the school's trying to do. No need to rush, as they say. We are joined here by Nancy Seligson, the supervisor of the town of Mamaroneck, which encompasses the village of Mamaroneck and the village of Larchmont, too. I'm John Marino. We are Westchester Talk Radio, westchestertalkradio.com, produced by Shark Creative, our Cup of Joe political show made possible by our good friends over at places like Entergy, Indian Point Energy Center, supporting our communities right through April of 2021. Lipolis Electric, don't be left in the dark. Get Lipolis. And Hightower, Westchester, managing your wealth to a fiduciary standard. Also by White Plains Hospital, our thanks to our heroes at White Plains Hospital throughout the COVID-19-2020 pandemic. Wartburg Healthcare and Rehabilitation in Mount Vernon. Park Sterling Realty in Bronxville. And Michael Labriola Landscape Design and Construction. Nancy Seligson in the town of Maranek. It's a very environmentally conscious town. You have undertaken a number of environmental issues in town. We are going green step by step. Tell us about that. Well, I've been involved in the environmental arena for a very, very long time, way longer than I have been the town supervisor. But I was very interested to bring those connections and activities and interests to the town because I think that for every community in Westchester and every community around the world, really, we need to be figuring out how to become more sustainable, more resilient, and at the same time, hopefully improve our quality of life. So the town of Mamaroneck became a climate smart community. We were the ninth community in New York State to be named a climate smart community uh, several years ago. And that was a great honor. And we had to prove all the things that we've done in the town uh, in order to earn that uh, title. But recently, we are working on a community solar project. And that is going to uh, put solar panels on top of the Hammocks ice rink. And we will lease that to the solar contractor, the town will lease it, we will get rent payments for that lease, and then they will create renewable energy. And that renewable energy would be offered first to low and median income residents in the town of Mamaroneck because it will be at a discount compared to regular electric prices. So we're very excited about that. It's one of the first community solar projects in the county, and um, hopefully it's going to start in the next few months. That's one exciting thing. We also uh, installed four electric vehicle charging stations in the town of Mamaroneck last year. We got grants from New York State to help us build those. So now if you have electric vehicle in the town of Mamaroneck, you can certainly charge it in several places. And importantly, if you're traveling through the town of Mamaroneck or need to travel past the town of Mamaroneck, you know that you can come off the road and charge your vehicle if you need to. And you're seeing a great uptick in the usage of electric vehicles around the town? We have. We see a lot of electric vehicles now. I, I myself just bought one of the Prius Prime cars, which is both electric for a certain amount, and then it transfers over to hybrid. So, um, And we see a lot of Teslas, <laughs> which is nice, and a lot of both. We see, yeah. Um, I also co-chair Sustainable Westchester, which is a countywide nonprofit and the members are the municipalities throughout Westchester County. So we're in the renewal process right now for the Community Choice Aggregation Program, which is a program that brings together municipalities 
who are in Con Ed service or NYSEG service. And it takes that uh, aggregated buying power and goes out to the market and says, okay, um, energy companies, you give us your best price. We want a fixed rate. We want it to be based on renewable energy and we want it to be for one or two years and see what kind of price we can get to benefit residents in offering this opportunity to participate in renewable energy and to give them a fixed rate. Now, sustainable Westchester, sustainable Hudson Valley. So you're working together with, I would assume, Seth Lightman, correct? All right, yes. sustainable. We yes. had Seth on as a guest recently. We had a long, extensive talk about the green economy, all of this and a lot more too. So great. you're in good hands with Seth. We know that. Yeah, he's great. Yep. Uh, we have another exciting project coming up that um, we're trying to implement green infrastructure wherever we can in the town. And green infrastructure means that you're, when you do um, or when you retrofit, renovate or repair infrastructure, that you take a look at it and think, how is that? How can that be improved so that it helps the environment instead of hurting it? And one of the ways we've done that is we did a big project in renovating the uh, town center parking lot. And in the parking lot, which really desperately needed to be repaired, we have put porous pavement, we have rain gardens, and we have catch basin filters so that the water that was sheeting off from the town center in the parking lot and going straight into the Mamaroneck Harbor West Basin is now being treated, meaning that it goes through several layers of filtration before it is discharged again and discharge at a slower rate and a, a, a less rate because it has gone through the green infrastructure. We got a big grant um, from the Long Island Sound Futures Fund to do that, to help us do that. And we also have just gotten a grant uh, award from New York State to be able to do the same kind of green infrastructure work on the renovation of Madison Avenue, which is the street that uh, the entrance to the I-95 is. So uh, we're excited about that, and we're excited to be able to leverage the funds from grants to be able for us to do more environmentally resilient and sustainable projects. I have to point out that the town of Mamaroneck has always been one of the leaders in this area when it comes to any kind of infrastructure and road repair, et cetera, overall, in a different media venue a few years back, I would have one time Larchmont mayor and McAndrews as a frequent guest. And I don't think there was a conversation we had where we did not talk and she did not talk about infrastructure initiatives in Larchmont and throughout the entire town of Mamaroneck. And I think that's an issue, at least from my standpoint, that Locally, throughout this tri-state area, I think every community should focus on this a bit more. And you and Mamaroneck have led the way for a long time now. Yeah, and we have to do it. You're right, John, because we are old communities. You know, we are very established. We've been here a long time. So the sewer systems, the road systems, the water systems, they were built a long time ago. And they have been patched together and, and limped along in quite a ways, quite a long time but there are some serious repairs that have to be done. And I'm happy to say that we are working with the village of Larchmont, the city of New Rochelle and the village of Pelham Manor, along with the town of Mamaroneck to repair our sewer systems, our sanitary sewer systems. So our sanitary pipes are being um, renovated, repaired, upgraded, and that is going to help Long Island Sound water quality by removing some of that um, overflow and runoff from the sound. And we're very excited about that. It's also very expensive, but it's needed. And we're required to do it. The state and the county are requiring us to do it. So we know it's the right thing to do. And uh, we are doing it. And again, we got a great grant from the state of New York, $5.2 million to help the four municipalities move forward with this effort. So I'm proud of that. And, you know, it's not a glamorous thing. Sewers are underground. I always say they get a lot more attention if they were above ground, but they are a fundamental aspect of civilized society and we need to take care of them. Now, before the pandemic hit, I had a very good friend who I hung out with for a number of years at the Starbucks on Route 1 in Mamaroneck. And he is a construction consultant, lives over in Harrison, not going to mention any names, but he would tell me about the project he did the night before, the one he'd be going to that night. And I'd say, you have to do what? And he'd say, as you pointed out, these systems are old. He'd say, what do you expect? It was built 125 years ago. 
Or I remember he went up on Route 9 one night in Irvington, and I knew the exact spot he was talking about. And I said to him, like, I know what you mean. I drive over it all the time. It's uh, amazing that nobody crashes through Route 9 there and lands in the center of the earth. What year was that built in? Like 1909? So Mm -hmm. I'll be out there for a while. And this is what we face around the area. And I don't think the average person looks at it this way. This is what's out there and what has to be dealt with and what governments have to deal with and make it happen. You're right. It's not something that people consider. You know, they're very happy. They flush their toilet. It all goes away. It goes down the drain in their sinks or in their... Not that simple. It all goes away. It certainly isn't that simple. There's a lot of systems in place that are very old that are dealing with that. And they do it pretty well, but they need repairs. They need uh, renovation. They need upgrading. And we need to be able to fund that because that is a fundamental uh a need for our communities. And it's the same thing with the water systems as well, you know, the drinking water systems. Those communities that aren't on wells have uh, water distribution. Ours is from Westchester Joint Water Works. I happen to chair the board for Westchester Joint Water Works. And that again is an old system. And we have water main breaks on a continual basis. We have to take care of fire hydrants. We have to make sure that we have enough redundancy water uh, availability within the system should anything go out. And we've got to upgrade our system. And EPA is making us upgrade our system. So we've got some big investments and infrastructure in that system as well. Another project you would tell me about (laughs) up in Mount Kisco, where he would frequently work. I think they finally got that done after a long time. And this kind of all falls into the category of we have to constantly work and repair, not wait 100 years later before things collapse, before we at least try to finally get something done. Last few minutes here with the supervisor of the town of Ameranek, Nancy Selix. And Nancy, Governor Cuomo issued a mandate a couple of months ago as we work towards social justice and work for a police reform that every community around the state by next spring has to give him each community's plan about police reform. What does that look like at the moment in Mamaroneck? Uh, well, during the um, spring and uh, we had a couple of marches, uh, we had one march and one gathering Uh, really based on Black Lives Matter. And uh, as you said, it's now evolved with the executive order from the governor. And uh, we're lucky we have a councilman, John, uh, sorry, Jeff King, who has stepped forward and said that he'd like to spearhead a task force for us to examine these issues and to follow up on them. He actually um, started the task force before the executive order uh, was enacted, which is great. So we have several community members who are meeting now on a regular basis to determine how they will and how they would like to um, address the issues that we're being asked to address. And uh, they've already met with the chief of police and the town administrator to let them know that we're interested. You know, we're lucky in the town of Mamaroneck, again, I'm going to knock on some wood, that we don't have a lot of crime. Um, We have a good relationship between our community and the police department. We think things could always improve. We think that transparency and communication could be improved so that there is a a better relationship and sort of a higher level relationship between the community and the police. And that's what they're going to be looking at. So Jeff is uh, reporting to the town board on a regular basis and having meetings on a regular basis. And we're, we're very glad about that. Larchmont, Mamaroneck, amongst the safest areas around our tri-state area, as you point out, very low crime around the town of Mamaroneck. And I think that's a kudos and hats off to everybody, all the stakeholders involved around the town to making that happen, to residents, to government, to police, to social and group organizations, et cetera. They make it all happen together. And I think that's what it's all about. We have a great populace of residents in our community who are really interested in our community and all different levels, you know, senior citizens, students students, young people, different houses of worship, all have very strong uh, feelings for the community and and make a lot of efforts to participate in the community, which is so rewarding as a community and makes our community uh, great. Nancy, before we go, Nancy Seligson, town of Mamaroneck supervisor, nine years in office. I have to ask you, with year number 10 coming up, you're in your fifth term, What does the future look like for you? Will there be a run for a sixth term or is that TBD to be determined? (laughs) I would say it really is TBD to be determined because 
this summer has really been tough, you know, in focusing on the pandemic and then the crazy storm, Isaias, which really was a doozy and threw it for a loop. I have been so busy just trying to take care of the Tanama Maranek and um, making sure that we're in good shape. And I'm happy to say we are, uh, that I really haven't given it any thought yet, John, but Thanks for me, reminding me that I need to. <laughs> and by the way, look at the bright side. Here we are. It is basically autumn now, and we're in the heat of the hurricane season with a lot of tropical yeah. storms brewing. Who knows what the fall might hold when it comes to storms and power and utilities and all those kind of things, right? Uh, that's true, and I will remind everyone that I don't control the electric service, the utilities. I'm sorry to say, and I certainly don't control the weather, but I wish I did because we don't need any more storms like that. It's all in the hands of Mother Nature, right? So let's be nice yeah. to her. Let's go green and continue to work with and help the environment, and she'll be kind to us in turn. I think so, too. Nancy Seligson, the supervisor of the town of Mamaroneck here on Westchester Talk Radio, westchestertalkradio.com, produced by Shark Creative, that is shark with a C, not a K. Made possible by our good friends over at Entergy, the Indian Point Energy Center. At Entergy, they promise to keep powering up and supporting our communities right through April of 2021. Lipolis Electric, don't be left in the dark. Get Lipolis, Hightower Westchester. At Hightower, they manage our wealth to a fiduciary standard. White Plains Hospital, special thanks to all of our heroes over at White Plains Hospital for all of their heroic work throughout the COVID-19 pandemic here in 2020. Wartburg Healthcare and Rehabilitation in Mount Vernon, Park Sterling Realty in Bronxville, and Michael Labriola, Landscape Design and Construction. We thank you one and all. I'm John Marino, Westchester Talk Radio, westchestertalkradio.com. Catch all of our Westchester, Fairfield County, Putnam and Duchess Talk Radio shows on our YouTube channel, Shark Creative YouTube.